everyone am i audible and visible let me know by audible and visible audible <laughs> hello everyone welcome to on academy future doctors I myself, Dr. Deepti Karia. I am MD, PhD, Physiology. I am Associate Professor and Educating MBBS, MD, Nursing and Physiotherapy student. I have more than 17 years of teaching experience. Let me explain something about our subscription. We have two varieties of subscription. One that is plus subscription and second is iconic subscription. In plus subscription, you can choose the best from two of the best. Here you can access live as well as recorded classes. You can study on the device of your choice. You can learn from India's top educators for your medical exams. You can access Question Bank, which is having more than 25,000 questions. You can compete in the live test and quizzes. And within 12 months, we are coming with our printed notes. Second is our iconic subscription. Here. Your access to the best from two of the best. And which are these two? One that is an Academy and Prep Ladder with an Academy. Features are in which you'll get well structured live batches. You can get recorded classes which covers your full syllabus. We have Question Bank which is having more than 25,000 questions. Here you can compete in the live test as well as quizzes. And will provide you comprehensive printed and digital notes. Whereas in second one, that is on academy and prep ladder with prep ladder. Here you can have clinical and integrated essentials, video lectures from the dream team. You can have question bank three with active guidance, system tags, and much more. Rapid revision and snapshots and treasures in 2021. You can subscribe from your mobile either plus or iconic subscription. You can use my code dipti 10 and get 10% extra discount. These are various subscription dates. Longer the duration of subscription, cheaper are the rates. Issue. Hello. Welcome. Now, some other features we have added in our special class. I'll just enumerate within two minutes. Okay? So here in special class, you can have interactive live classes. You can attend live class as well as you can participate in the live chat and get your doubt clear. Also, we have a facility of raise a hand. You can talk to your educator in the live class and get your doubts resolved. Call for the learner facility is also available. You can get reminder every time, notified every time, so you can never miss the class. We'll provide you lecture notes. You can download lecture notes and get access to the recorded sessions of live classes. You can also revisit them whenever you need. And you can attend your live classes as well as you can participate in the live chat at any time. This I have already discussed. We have effective question bank. Now, this question bank is having more than 25,000 high yield clinical questions. Okay? Now, this clinical questions, they are based on latest exam pattern. And along with that, we will also provide you detailed explanation of all these questions. This is our NEET PG September 2021 toppers. Congratulations to all. Here we have various exam schedules for medical PG test. You can see December 2021. We have educator, curator test series, Wednesday, FMG, grant test series, study with me, YouTube test series, Saturday special class, marathon based test series, grant test series for NEET PG, FMG, and INIC. Okay, plus batch test rituals are also there at every Saturday, Sunday and Sunday for different batches. Here we also have already started Focus FMG 2022 comprehensive batch. 
has been started from 15th December 2021, that is for six months, and target need PG 2022 test and discussion batch, that is also from 15th December, its duration is for three months. So you can enhance your studies with us. Okay, let us start with today's topic. That is regulation of respiration. Today we'll discuss about nervous regulation of respiration, one of the very important topic for your respiratory system. Okay. <clears throat> now another more thing, more announcement is here. This is all videos, live videos as well as recorded, or you are accessing special classes. They all are free to access. Okay. Now let us start with our topic: regulation of respiration. Now, what is the aim of regulation? Why? Respiration regulation is required. That is required to maintain concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide and H plus ions in our body. When we are not maintaining respiration, this concentration they are deranged. Okay? Main aim that is to maintain all these concentrations normal. Respiration is regulated by two. Number one, that is nervous regulation of respiration. And second is chemical regulation of respiration. Today we will discuss about this one nervous regulation of respiration. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, nervous regulation of respiration that is also known as neural control for the regulation of respiration. Here, this neural control is made up of two types of control. Number one, that is automatic control one okay automatic control means that is not under our will we are not controlling automatically respiration is carried out if we are sleeping we are performing any activity we are not knowing that our respiration is continued okay that is also known as involuntary control and second one that is voluntary control suppose if i tell you to hold your breath so that is you can hold for a few seconds so that is voluntary control so we have dual control both the types of control voluntary and voluntary what is the role of this dual control involuntary control this one first one that is essential for life if it is not there will die and voluntary control that is important while performing some acts like if i told you voluntary breath holding voluntary hyperventilation or when we are talking when we are singing swimming okay in all these conditions this voluntary control is helpful okay now for the functions of this respiration or regulation of respiration okay here this is nervous so whenever we are talking about nervous regulation we have three things in our mind it is always reflex in any of the reflex we have you can see receptors receptors are there at the site of action so receptors they send signals through the nerve you can see okay so sensors or receptors then center controlling centers which are present in brain stem as well as higher centers also there okay and effector two efferent nerve effector are our again this muscles Muscles, they have receptors as well as muscle contraction acts as an effector. Okay. Starting with the centers. We have three pairs. Try to remember this. Three pairs means both the sides. We have respiratory centers. These centers are present in the medulla oblongata. You can see here these are medullary centers. Medullary centers are of two types. Number one dorsal respiratory group of neuron and second one that is ventral respiratory group of neuron you can see ventrally ventral dorsally dorsal respiratory group then here in the lower bones here there is one center apneostic center and in the upper bones there is pneumotaxic center here Starting with first one, dorsal respiratory group of neuron. Here you can see this one. These are present dorsally. Here, this is our, your cerebellum. So here dorsally, this center. Location in the name of the nucleus where the centers are located. That is nucleus, tractus. 
solitarius factor solitarius okay is the name of the nucleus in which this center is located okay and this center consists of mainly i neuron i neuron means inspiratory neuron why inspiratory because they send signals only to the muscles of inspiration which are the muscles of inspiration diaphragm and external intercostal muscle okay now the so function is they emit emit means they send repetitively cost of the action potential this now fiber so it sends action potential okay and transmit now signals to the muscles of inspiration which are the muscles of inspiration diaphragm and external intercostal muscle okay so this i neurons again now this neurons of dorsal respiratory group they are divided in different group one that is cia central inspiratory activity neuron this one central inspiratory activity neuron second inspiratory off switch neuron and third integrating this two that is integrator new okay we will discuss one by one starting with first one central inspiratory activity these are the main neurons the known as r alpha neuron okay and these neurons are also known as upper motor neurons for respiratory muscles means impulses are transmitted this neurons they act as upper motor neuron these are responsible for one that is central inspiratory activity means whatever activity which is required for the inspiration and second thing they also send signals to integrator neuron because it has to integrate integrator okay so this is the action central inspiratory activity and also send signals to integrator neurons now what is the role of central inspiratory activity whatever basic rhythm for respiration that is generated by central inspiratory activity neurons this is your ramp inspiratory ramp signal you can see here this is your ramp signal why is it known as inspiratory ramp signal it is like the signal suppose you can see your the central inspiratory activity neuron is there in the medulla okay when they get active they send signals this is in the form of nerve action potential okay this signal is transmitted in a form of inspiratory ramp signal what is it this signal is weak in the beginning you can see steadily increase in ramp fashion like this steady and sudden stoppage this is weak in the beginning steadily increase and sudden this duration of the signal is for 2 seconds then followed by 3 second there is no signal easy example i can give suppose in diwali we have lighting bulbs small bulbs are there so how do they act like slightly they just on just off same way here the signals they send information this is in the form of ramp man peak in the beginning steadily increase in ramp fashion and sudden stoppage okay this is for 2 seconds and 3 seconds there is no signal and when there is no signal what happens there is expiration because of elastic recoil of lung tissue So this is your inspiratory ramp signal. This is the function of central inspiratory activity (CIA). Second are this is you can see here inspiratory. These are main neurons. They send signals to the muscle of inspiration in the form of ramp signal. Diaphragm is main muscle. Now, second are your inspiratory off switch neurons. They switch off. the signal okay, so what they do is when they get information from this integrator neuron that now inspiration is required to 
off then they cause here there is a switch off so that causes abrupt stoppage immediate abrupt stoppage of central inspiratory activity front okay, so that is stoppage of inspiration and now after stoppage of inspiration what happens three seconds no signal no signal that causes activity okay. so this is the action of inspiratory off switch third variety are integrated neuron or integrating neuron this are these are located near this inspiratory neuron central inspiratory activity neuron they are known as r alpha neurons okay. near this there are integrating neurons they are known as r beta neuron okay. what is the function of this integrated neurons they integrate all the activity <coughs> sorry <coughs> they integrate activities from this respiratory rhythm <clears throat> they receive inputs from central inspiratory activity neurons as well as from inspiratory off switch okay, and they integrate this to okay, so that is integrated neuron so another important thing here is this integrated neuron they get excitatory and inhibitory so excite so we have discussed three types of neurons okay, one is central inspiratory activity neurons these are the upper motor neurons supplying muscles of inspiration that is diaphragm and external intercostal okay second inspiratory off switch neuron they switch off the signal and third integrate integrator neuron here these are the main neurons they integrate activity of this two and they get excitation from cerebral cortex also they get excitation from pneumotaxic center and vagus nerve and inhibitory signals are transmitted from apneum center okay. so again you can see this is the model showing all the neurons inspiratory motor neurons that is central inspiratory activity inspiratory switch off neurons and integrating okay. next are prg ventral respiratory group of neurons here this you can see this one is located ventrally here this one they contain both inspiratory and expiratory neurons like these are inspiratory and these are in dorsal respiratory group of neuron very important thing there are only inspiratory no expiratory there here both the kinds of neurons inspiratory and expiratory and both have inhibitory connections with each means when inspiratory are stimulated they inhibit expiratory expiratory are stimulated they inhibit in This VRG neuron has different parts. You can see. These are VRG. This one. So first is most cord caudal part. This one. Caudal part, which is also known as nucleus retroambiguous, which is having only E neurons in this diagram. You can see the E. Okay. Mainly E neurons, and these are upper motor neurons for expiratory muscles. Then second is intermediate part here. They have only eye neurons, and that is also known as nucleus paraambiguous. Then this is intermediate. Third one, most rostral part. This one, rostral part of ventral respiratory group of. This one. Now they again have e neurons, expiratory neurons. As I told you, I and E neurons they have inhibitory connection with each other, or you can say reciprocal connection with each other. When I neurons are stimulated, E are inhibited. Expiratory, expiratory neurons are stimulated, inspiratory one are inhibited. Okay. Now, what is the role of ventral respiratory group? This ventral respiratory group of neurons they are 
inactive during quiet breathing when i am sitting here quietly breathing this vrg are not active they are active only when i am performing forceful respiration or when i require high level of pulmonary ventilation okay high level of pulmonary ventilation then only this vrg gets active okay am i clear then next is your pontine center the vrg pontine in pons we have two neurons or two pair of neurons in lower pons there are apneostic center and in upper pons pneumotaxic center okay. this apneostic center which are they you can see here this is in some of the books uh, they have not me mentioned about this center here like questionable these are the group of inhibitory neurons which are located in both the sides in lower pons now what is the action of this apneus as i told you dorsal respiratory group neurons okay they have central inspiratory activity neurons inspiratory off switch neurons and integral so this apneostic centers they send signals to integrated neurons then what they do is this integrated neurons they cause activity of inspiratory off switch means they switch off the inspiration okay this is the signal ramp signal so they cause switch off of the signal but here they, this centers apneostic center they prevent this switch off so what happens your respiration is prolonged and prolonged respiration or cessation of respiration that is known as apneosis okay and because of that tidal volume is increased last large amount of inspiration is there duration of inspiration increases and there is again after that when this apneostic centers are inhibited these are again inhibited by your pneumotaxic center okay then only there is respiration as well as these are also inhibited by vagus nerve so this two they inhibit apnea okay. now next is pneumotaxic center yeah sorry the pneumotaxic they are located in the upper pons in upper pons we have the nucleus name of the nucleus is nucleus parabrachialis which we have pneumotaxic center okay these centers they inhibit apneostic area here this one inhibit this one okay and thus they control switch off what is the role of apneostic center they prevent switch off of the of the inspiratory off switch okay so what happens signals are longer so instead of 2 seconds inspiration may be of 5 seconds Okay, so that is apnea. But here, this centers pneumotaxic. They inhibit apnea. So they control this action of apneotic centers. Okay. When the signal is strong, suppose your pneumotaxic signal is strong. So what happens? You can see here. This is inspiratory signal, ram signal. Now, here there is. You can see this one. inspiration sorry okay abrupt stoppage now here what happens when the pneumotaxic signals are strong so what happens now stoppage is early early switch off so what happens here instead of 2 seconds the respiration be inspiration becomes 1 second and here normal cycle what is the normal cycle 2 second inspiration 3 second expiration so one cycle is of 5 seconds okay Suppose if we have five seconds, one cycle. So in sixty seconds, how many cycles divided by five? Twelve cycles. Okay. But now here you can see, if suppose inspiration is one second and then expiration is two second, so the whole cycle is equal to. Okay. So in three seconds, one cycle. So in sixty seconds, how many cycles? Twenty. Okay. So respiratory rate, you can see, it is increased. clear so this is strong pneumotaxic 
opposite is also true when the signal is weak what happens this duration is prolonged so now here what happens instead of 2 seconds the inspiration becomes 4 seconds and the expiration suppose it is 6 seconds so 1 cycle is 10 seconds so in 60 seconds you can say only 6 cycles divided by 10 six. so this way weak pneumotaxic signal they inhibit the number of cycles existence and function of all these neurons how we will discuss suppose you can see there are you can see here this is the diagram we have discussed you can see this is in the upper pons pneumotaxic center apneostic center drg and dr so here what we do is first of all we have section here below the medulla so what happens now no respiratory centers are active regulating respiration so what happens there is apnea stoppage of respiration vagus is intact or cut it has no man okay second this one if there is a section between your medulla and pons so what happens here the section between medulla and pons you can see normal rhythm is there but if we cut the vagus this rhythm is slightly disturbed so you can say that normal rhythm is generated by drg but vagus also regulates it so this is conclusion of second point. third section here you can see when we put a section at midbrain here between Otaxic and apneos. So what happens? Initially rhythm is regulated. But if we do vagus removal, then as I told you, apneostic centers are regulated by pneumotaxic and vagus. So pneumotaxic control is lost here. If we are also cutting vagus now, both the controls are lost. So now apneostic center can perform its activity and it produces apnea. When we are sectioning above or rostral to the pons, you can see normal breathing. But if we do vagotomy, then respiratory rhythm is slightly affected. And so you can say that this rhythm that is regulated, that is generated in this DRG and VRG, but it is regulated by motaxic and apneotic centers. So the rhythm is originated in DRG but regulated in pneumotaxic and apnea. There are various components of involuntary control. Means you can see this is your main inspiratory centers which is present in DRG. Now these centers they send signals to muscles of inspiration, diaphragm and external intercostal. Okay. So what happens here? This TRG has influenced by apneostic center, pneumotaxic center, lung stretch receptors, central chemoreceptors, peripheral chemoreceptors, muscles, joint receptors. They all send signals to the inspiratory center. Okay, now, what is the role of this and what is the importance of it? Why is it required? Purpose of this all afferent signals that is cope up with the oxygen demand because our body regularly our body requires oxygen okay so to cope up with the oxygen demand and remove carbon dioxide so you can see here we require oxygen and remove carbon dioxide second thing is this reflexes are important to regulate h plus concentration because when our respiration is affected our h plus so affected third to maintain temperature and fourth to maintain oxygen Tension. So for that, we have impulses from three ways. Number one, from higher centers. Second, from non-chemical receptors. Third, from chemical receptors. We will discuss one by one. First is afferent signals from higher center, from brain. You can see. The centers they have no role in normal respiration. They have only role when we are holding the breath, breath holding or hyperventilation or when there is, you can say, talking, singing, swimming. 
Second is this voluntary control. This, this pathway, it, it originates from neocortex, cerebral cortex. And it bypasses our, your, this medullary respiratory centers. And as I told you, this voluntary control is important during talking, singing, breath holding. And there are certain centers, for example, suppose you stimulate anterior cingulate gyrus and also stimulate ventral surface of the frontal cortex. This respiration is in. So some centers are for inhibition. And if you stimulate motor cortex, there is stimulation of respiration. Then limbic system also has a role. For example, suppose if we have painful stimulus emotional stimulus which affects the rate and depth of respiration. So this is about voluntary control. So this we have completed first impulse for, from higher center. Now we discuss about non-chemical receptors. Okay? So for non-chemical receptors you can see afferent impulse is from pulmonary stretch receptors, stretch receptors from lungs. And this is herring brewer reflex. What is this herring brewer reflex? Whenever lungs are inflated above normal, this inflation is in. So inhibition of inflation, inhibition of inspiration on inflation of lungs. I'll explain. Suppose if I tell uh, if I tell you that you inspire as much as possible so there is some limit after inspiring such extent now you say that i cannot inspire because here because of this reflex your inspiration is in why this reflex is there because our lung stretch receptors are stimulated the stretch receptors they are present in the walls of lungs as well as bronchi bronchio and impulses are transmitted through vagus now to the respiratory center and they inhibit in okay? so this is herring brewer inflation reflex same way you can see here this is stretch receptors transmitted through vagus now and it second is herring brewer deflation reflex what is it here suppose if i tell you to expire there is also a limit you cannot expire more so inhibition of expiration deflation of okay? that is Herring brewer deflation. What is the importance of this reflex? It is a protective reflex. Why? Because if we are in, inspiring a large amount of air, it may rupture, it may lead to injury to our lungs. So, this herring brewer reflex that is initiated to prevent injury to the lungs. And this is not initiated with tidal volume. It started when your tidal volume increases three times. Normal tidal volume is 500. When it reaches to more than 1500 ml, then it results in initiation of herring brewer reflex. Okay. Next is afferent impulses from J receptors. J receptors are known as juxta pulmonary receptors. These receptors are invented by A.S. Painter. He was Indian scientist in 19. Okay. And these receptors, they are stimulated. Here you can see in the interstitial spaces, the receptors are there. They are stimulated when the interstitial fluid content increases. Like, for example, there is congestion, pulmonary congestion, large amount of uh, fluid is congested pulmonary edema, pneumonia, inflation of lungs. So in all this as well as emboli in the pulmonary circulation. So what happens this interstitial fluid increases. And as interstitial fluid increases, this J receptors are stimulated. You can see here. This is our alveolus pulmonary capillary. In between we have this J. And they are nothing but the unmyelinated nerve endings of the vagus nerve. They are stimulated by chemicals also. And these impulses are transmitted through vagus nerve. And they reinforce the action of pneumotaxic signal. And pneumotaxic signal is re-influenced and that affects our respiratory. So, there is J-receptor reflex. Means when J-receptors are stimulated, what happens? 
द पर्सन इज हैविंग एपनिया ट्रॉपेज ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन विच इज फॉलोड बाय फर्स्ट एपनिया देन द पर्सन इज हैविंग टेकिपनिया देन ब्रेडिकार्डिया डिक्रीज हार्ट रेट हाइपोटेंशन डिक्रीज ब्लड प्रेशर एंड स्केलेटल मसल वीक दिस जे रिसेप्टर there is also physiological role of j receptor suppose when we are performing exercise severe exercise what happens there is stimulation of j receptor so it inhibits by exercise that now we have not to perform exercise more than this so this is about afferent impulses from uh, stretch receptors and j receptor then afferent impulses from irritant receptors we will discuss one by so first that is cough reflex what is cough reflex when our irritant receptors in the pharynx you can see here trachea okay? larynx bronchi when they are stimulated what happens person tries to remove this foreign substance the cough reflex. then comes sneezing reflex what is sneezing reflex when this receptors in the nose they are stimulated then instead of coughing we have sneeze after an impulse is from sneeze then reflex tachypnea and bronchoconstriction what is it when we are stimulating this irritant receptor in the respiratory tract what happens there is release of histamine and histamine causes bronchoconstriction constriction of bronchi and because of bronchoconstriction this foreign particle cannot enter okay then next is deglutition reflex whenever we are swallowing at that time respiration stops for few seconds why because afferent impulses they are transmitted from ninth cranial nerve that is glossopharyngeal nerve okay and then it reaches to the respiratory center and it inhibit respiratory center produces apnea let us repeat we have discussed which afferent let us repeat all you can see i have enumerated one that is afferent from higher centers second afferent from non chemical receptors that is from herring brewer reflex that is then afferent from irritant receptor j receptors afferent from other irritant receptors that is cough reflex sneezing reflex reflex tachypnea bronchoconstriction and deglutition next comes afferent from proprioceptors next is afferent from chest wall stretch receptors afferent from marrow receptors and thermoreceptors we will discuss one by one this four are left so next is afferent from proprioceptors proprioceptors means receptors for the sense of position of body okay. so these are present in the muscles tendons and joints so whenever there is movement passive or active movement of this muscles tendons and joints this proprioceptors are stimulated and this proprioceptors they send signals to the respiratory centers and they regulate our respiration okay so they are helpful to regulate respiration during exercise because when we are performing exercise for this all proprioceptors are stimulated and also it is helpful in the pediatric patient this is the reason why when a baby borns we say that baby must cry because what happens during crying of crying act this proprioceptors stimulate then afferent impulses from chest wall stretch receptor that is in the chest wall we have muscles and in this muscles we have muscle spindles what is the action here stretch receptor we have discussed stretch receptors stretching produces contraction so whenever this muscle spindle gets stretched pulses are transmitted and it gets contracted and this is important when we are speaking okay? at the time of speech as well as when we are changing the posture and our respiratory muscles this muscle spindles they get stretched and stretching results in contraction then afferent impulses from baro receptors we all know baro receptors these are the pressure receptors present in the carotid sinus and aortic arch whenever blood pressure increases 
this receptors are stimulated and this receptors through vagus nerve here from aortic arch glossopharyngeal nerve from carotid sinus they send signals to the respiratory centers and they again produce inhibition of respiration here in physiological condition they don't have very much significant role but when we are giving adrenaline what is the role of adrenaline when we give adrenaline there is sharp increase in blood pressure so when blood pressure increases this baroreceptors are stimulated and as baroreceptors are stimulated they cause inhibition of respiration and that is known as adrenaline apnea so take precaution when you are giving adrenaline with increase in the blood pressure respiration may stop and last one after an impulse is from thermoreceptor this warmth receptors they are present all over the skin impulses are transmitted through this warmth receptor skin thermoreceptors you can see to the cerebral cortex and impulses they are transmitted by somatic afferent nerve and they stimulate respiratory center and they produce the respiration so this is about afferent impulses from thermoreceptors Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, you can like, share with your friends. You can subscribe our channel on Academy Future.